Well, it's moving on now. The government has appointed a task team to look at the possibility of imposing a ban on microbeads. A report by the Water Research Commission reveals water in Johannesburg and Twane is contaminated with microplastic pollution. The CEO of the Water Research Commission, Desigan Nairu, is in our Pretoria studios to tell us more about this this morning. Desigan, good morning and thanks for your time. For those of us who, who don't know too much um, uh, about uh, products and what happens in manufacturing, what are microbeads? Where do we find them? Ah, good morning uh, to you and good morning to your viewers. Microbeads are found in many of the cosmetics uh, and washing agents that we use daily. Uh, these are small plastic beads that are used as scrubbing agents. Uh, this morning, you yourself probably used toothpaste that had mm -hmm. microbeads. You probably used a facial scrub that had microbeads and maybe even a shower gel that has microbeads. They're rampant and they're on every supermarket shelf around the country. Mm. So you're saying that you found that the water is highly contaminated with this microplastic pollution. So what is the impact of this? I mean, apart from the obvious dangers, you say we're already ingesting these things, they're already being used in our bodies. What is happening? Where is the impact being felt? Look, the, the impacts are very large, uh, so much so that many countries in the world that have, have already banned this. Uh, firstly, the, the big issue is that microplastics can get sufficiently small that can enter inside your body system. So if it gets below five microns, it actually gets through your gut. Uh, but the other thing that is, is really problematic, apart from being part of the overall plastic pollution in the system and polluting the environment even further, is that one of the boons of water-based systems is that some persistent organic pollutants dilute out in the water because they're hydrophobic. They don't stick to the water. Mm. Now, what happens with microbeads, microbeads are themselves hydrophobic. So they attach onto these microbeads and become vectors. And, and there's some nasty stuff out there, like PCBs, for example, that are potentially carcinogenic as well. They can also affect your reproductive system. They will affect your endocrine system. And it's something that we have to deal with and we have to deal with very quickly. The thing that we don't know yet is the extent of the problem, the level of the pollution, and whether or not that's within acceptable limits. This is work that still has to happen. But following the examples from elsewhere in the world, we can see, for example, the US and the UK have banned this completely. So uh, as of 2019, in the UK, you're not allowed to buy any products that mm. have this, and people who have it on their shelves will actually be fined. They've gone further in these studies and worked out what their impacts are around the system. So places like the Indian Bureau of Standards, for example, have declared this completely unsafe. So what are the alternatives then? I mean, obviously, the indus these industries have been using uh, these, uh, uh, these products uh, in their products uh, or, or, or these materials in their products for, for decades now. What else? What will be the alternative to this? Well, actually, Yuveka, that's an interesting question because uh, th these products on the market are actually relatively new. Uh, they've been around for the last decade or so, but not really before that, not at the scale of use that they currently are. And we've been using alternatives for, for many, many years, probably centuries. Uh, if I can remind you about your, your own childhood, that uh, the phenomenon of scrubbing your teeth to make them whiter mm. using charcoal, for example, mm. or strawberries, uh, scrubbing your skin with exfoliating agents like loofahs and coconut husks mm. uh, are all means that one can go back to. So the challenge to industry and, and there is a journey to be followed before this task can, can conclude on this matter in South Africa. But the message to industry is to start looking at these alternatives already. Mm. Because there are environmentally friendly alternatives that are possible and will organize to be degraded in a way that doesn't leave us mm. with a polluted environment. So one would have to ask, why use them at all then, Desigan? Why would they need them in their products? Do they bulk it up? Do they add volume to them? What would be the purpose? Well, the current purpose is that we all want whiter teeth and, and shinier skins, and we want the easiest way to do it. 
And from, from a scientific perspective, if you ignore the health impacts and the environmental impacts, this is a very powerful and easy mechanism to be able to mm. do it. Mm. It takes a lot more work to use uh, the other products that I, I talked about. So mm. the, the issue of convenience and customer convenience is something that drives this very strongly. This is also an industry that's worth many, many billions of dollars worldwide every year. So, so these are the drivers around it currently. So I, I suppose anyone sitting at home might be asking, okay, so what's the big deal? These are things that uh, are in the products. This is what it does to water. What's it actually doing to the body? Well, th these, these things that I told you about, these hydrophobic agents, actually affect your body in very perverse ways. So if you start ingesting these PCBs, uh, and another, another product that's out there that sticks to microbeads really well is something called DDT. They have very negative effects on human health. They also have effects on environmental health. You start killing off the fish in the water and, and the various microorganisms that keep our rivers healthy. For yourself, there's the carcinogenic effects. It's a real possibility of progenitors of cancer. There are reproductive effects, so PCBs have been associated with lower sterility, for example. They also affect your hormonal system. So it's, it's not the beads themselves, but actually what they're able to carry into the system that ordinarily would not be there. And then overall for the environment, we're adding to the bulk of the plastic pollution that we already feel the brunt of, not only in the oceans, and in the oceans these are now extreme, but also now in our freshwater systems, including our bottled water. So how do I identify which products? Do they say, would there be anything on the packaging? Obviously it's the things that have granules in them, like you say, your, your facial scrubs or the body scrubs that have uh, these, these beads in them. How else would I identify something from the packaging? Uh, the, the, well, the, the thing that we're going to have to go to now, firstly, some vo there, there is some voluntary messaging on the packaging already. So for those products, you will be able to identify it. But part of the work of the task team is to now identify different mechanisms of labeling associated with this. So moving towards the band, there will be registers of products mm -hmm. that contain microbeads in a sufficient enough level to be problematic both for human health as well as for environmental health. And this then will become part of what the public campaign is around this. Okay, thanks very much for that. We look forward to an update on that one. CEO of the Water Research Commission, Desi Ganado, in our Pretoria studio.